Welcome! In this session I would like to explain to you how to schedule tasks using Windows PowerShell. Scheduling tasks is an elegant way to automate processes. Before I start, I need to make sure that you have a full understanding of variables, aliases, loops, XML and how to use the pipeline. If you are unsure or would like to refresh your memory, please view one of my earlier sessions. Before we can create a scheduled task, we need to use a couple of commandlets to prepare the scheduled task. We need to use the new scheduled task action commandlet to set the program or command we would like to run in the task. The new scheduled task trigger commandlet is used to set up when the task should run. With the new scheduled task principle, we can specify a specific person, group or identity the task should be run as. In the new scheduled task setting set, we can do additional settings for the task. Then we can use the new scheduled task commandlet to combine the previous commandlets into one task. With the register scheduled task, we can register the task with the Windows Task Scheduler and enable the task. To create a task action, we can use the new scheduled task action commandlet. In the execute parameter, we need to specify the path to our executable. We can use the PS home variable to do less typing. In the argument parameter, we need to specify the location of the script that we would like to run. I will demonstrate this later, because there is no easy way to explain how this should work. This is an example on how to execute the new scheduled tasks action commandlet. Next up, we need to specify a trigger for our task. We can do so by using the new scheduled task trigger commandlet. The parameter that we can set are at startup. This will execute our action whenever the computer starts up. At logon, this will execute the action at logon. If we use this option, we can also limit the action to only execute for a specific user. To create a trigger, that will execute an action, we can use the new scheduled task trigger commandlet. The parameters that we can set are daily, this will execute the action every day. Please note that this is currently not available in Windows 10. In the parameter day interval, we can specify how many days the action should repeat the execution. We can specify a specific weekday when the action should be executed in the day of week parameter. In the random delay parameter, we can specify a time span when the action should be executed. In the add parameter, we can specify a time when the action should be executed. Furthermore, we can specify if the action should only be executed once if we use the once parameter switch. If we would like the action to repeat the execution, we can specify the time span in the repetition duration parameter. In the repetition interval parameter, we can specify how often the action should be executed. If we would like the action to be executed weekly, we can set the weekly parameter switch. In the parameter weeks interval, we can specify how many weeks the action should repeat the execution. Here is an example how to set a scheduled task to execute every day at 6 o'clock in the morning. If we want our task to run as a specific person, group or identity, we can use the new scheduled task principle commandlet. Parameters that can be set are the ID, 
the user ID. This can be an account name of a user or of a service. The run level parameter can be set to highest, to run at the highest privileges, or to limited, to run at limited privileges. The logon type parameter can be set to group, interactive, interactive or password, none, password, S4U, or service account. The process token SID type parameter can be set to default, none, or unrestricted. Here is an example on how to set the scheduled task principle to run as a local service using the user ID and the logon type. This is an example on how to set the task to run as the administrator group with highest privileges. Another commandlet that we can use is the new scheduled task settings set. This commandlet has got a lot of options. If you would like to view the list of all the parameters, please pause the video. As you can see, there are a lot of parameters that can be set. Here are two examples on how to use the commandlet. The first example shows how to execute the action only when the network is available. The second example shows how to run a hidden task. Now that we have created an action, a trigger, a principle and the settings, we can create the task with the new scheduled task commandlet, where we need to specify the action parameter with our new scheduled task action variable, the new scheduled task trigger variable needs to be set to the trigger parameter. The new scheduled task setting set variable needs to be set to the settings parameter. The new scheduled task principal variable is set to the principal parameter. And we can give our task a description by specifying the description parameter. Here is an example how to create a new task object with an action and a trigger. Now that we have created the new scheduled task object, we can finally register our task with our Windows task scheduler using the register scheduled task commandlet. Parameters that need to be set are the task name, this will be the name of the task that we would like to create. The task path is where the task should be created within the Windows task scheduler. In the input object parameter, we need to use our new scheduled task object variable. If the task should be run as a specific user, we need to specify the user and the password. This is what the command looks like to register a task with the Windows task scheduler. If we would like to retrieve a registered task as an object, we can do so by using the get scheduled task commandlet. The parameter that needs to be provided are task path. This would be the folder name where the task has been registered and the name of the task. Here is an example on how to use the get scheduled task commandlet. If we would like to retrieve information on a registered task, like last runtime, last task result, next runtime, we can do so by using the get scheduled task info commandlet. If we would like to disable a task, that is registered, 
we can simply use the disable schedule task commandlet and specify the task path and the task name parameters. Just that easy, we can enable a registered task with the enable scheduled task commandlet. If we want to export a task in XML format, we can use the export scheduled task commandlet to do so. Again, we need to provide the task path and the task name parameters. We can then use the commandlet set content, the greater than character, or pipe the object to the output file commandlet to write the exported information to disk. If we, need, if we need to make changes to a registered task, we can do so by using the set scheduled task commandlet. Parameters that can be set are the action, a trigger, setting, principle. We can use the input object if we have created an object variable of a task, for example, by using the get scheduled task commandlet. We can change the user and the password that will be used to run the task. Here is an example on how to change a trigger on a registered task. To start a scheduled task, we can use the start scheduled task commandlet. Again, we need to provide the task path and the task name parameters. To stop a scheduled task, we can use the stop scheduled task commandlet. After starting and stopping scheduled task, it might be useful to see what the state of the task currently is in and if an error occurred to see what the last task result was. This is a list of all the task result error codes that are available. If you are interested to see what they are, please pause the video. This is, the last, this is the last page of the task result error codes. One task result that I would like to demonstrate later is the sched as task terminated. That has an error code of 0x00041306. If we would like to remove a task from the Windows task scheduler, we need to use the unregister scheduled task commandlet. We need to specify the task path parameter, the task name parameter, and the confirm switch should be set to false to avoid any pop-ups. Deregistering a task will not delete the path folder from the Windows task scheduler where the task was registered. To delete this folder, Completely, we need to run the following commandlets. We need to create a new object variable with the parameters com object set to schedule.service. Then connect the scheduled service with the connect method within the object variable. We will then create another object variable with the get folder method. To get the root folder specified by colon uh, backslash another colon in round brackets. And to delete the folder from the Windows task scheduler, we will use the delete folder method and the folder name that we would like to delete. Okay, let's wrap this up with a couple of examples in Windows PowerShell ISE. Okay, I have opened Windows PowerShell ISE in administrator mode. We need administrative privileges to be able to register tasks with the Windows task scheduler. We're going to start off with creating a couple of string variables. We will create a string variable with the name of our task. We will create a string variable with the folder where we are going to pl place that task in. 
we are going to give it a description. We're going to specify a user that has access to write to the scheduled task with a password. Okay, then we're going to create a action object and I will just show you what the PS home variable looks like. This is where Windows PowerShell is installed in and we're going to use the PowerShell executable to set that to an executable string. And as the argument, we will specify dash file or the file property and then the name of the script that we are going to execute. All right, and we're going to set that to an action object. We are going to use the new scheduled task action commandlet, specify the execute parameter with our execute uh, string, and then the argument parameter with our argument string. Okay, up next we can create a trigger object and we're going to use the new scheduled task trigger commandlet. To do that, we will set our trigger to run every day and it should run in the morning at 6 o'clock. Then we're going to create a principal object with the new scheduled task principal commandlet, the user ID that will run that task will be a local service or the local service and the logon type will be a service account. Okay, then we can create a new task by writing that into a object or a task object. We're going to use the new scheduled task commandlet. Our action will be our action object. Our trigger will be our trigger object, the description will be our description string, and the principal will be our principal object. Okay, creating a new task or a scheduled task will not register that with the Windows Task Scheduler. We need to use the register scheduled task commandlet to register the task and we are going to specify the path where we would like or the folder where we would like to place the task. We need to give it a name and we're going to use our task string, string name and the input object will be the new task that we have just created and then a username and a password for user that has access rights to write to the Windows task server. All right, as you can see, we have just created a task called PowerShell test, and we've placed it in the folder PowerShell. All right, I'm just gonna open the task scheduler by running or using the commandlet start process and then the path to the task scheduler. As you can see, we have a folder called PowerShell. We have a task and if I go to the properties you can see that the user is administrator that's running it but it should. Our trigger is running or set to be daily at six o'clock in the morning and the action is starting a program and that is PowerShell with the argument with the script that we would like to execute. Oops, cancel, cancel. Okay. Now, um, to get information or to get that task, we are going to use the command that get scheduled task. We're going to specify the path where this task is located and the task name where that path is, or the past task task name. We're just going to format list to action, principal, settings, state, task name, principal path, triggers and URI. Alright, as you can see we have our actions that is actually an array and same down here the trigger is also stored in an array. So to be able to view those, we are going to run the commandlet 
get scheduled task again specify the path and the task name and then we're going to run for each action it should show us what the action is as you can see these are our actions we have our program and the execute property and the dash file and the script that we're going to run in the arguments property then we can do the same with settings this will specify all the settings that have been set. Since we didn't specify, this is the default that is being set. And then we can do the same with the triggers. This will give us information on the triggers. As you can see, it's running at 6 o'clock in the morning. And then we can do the same with the principal. And the principal is set to administrator instead of local task. I guess that did not run as I expected it to do. But this would be the way to set the user that should actually run that or that should execute that task. If we would like to get more information on that task, we can use the get scheduled task info commandlet, again specifying the path or the, the folder and the task name was going to format list to everything and this will give us a bit more information on when the task was last run when the next run is scheduled and so on to disable a task we are going to or we can use the disable scheduled task commandlet specify the folder and the task name. This will disable the task. And if we just scroll up, we can see when we created the task that the state was ready. And now we have disabled it and the state is disabled. To enable the task again, we're going to use the enable scheduled task commandlet, specify the folder and the task name, and again we have enabled it and we can see that the ready st that the state is ready. Okay, then I will demonstrate to you how to change a task and we are going to use the set scheduled task command to do that. First of all, we are going to change the trigger. We're going to use the new scheduled task trigger command to change it from 6 o'clock to 3 o'clock. We'll again set that to a trigger object. Now that we have the trigger object, we can use the set scheduled task commandlet, specify the folder path, the task name, and then we're going to change or set the trigger object. And we need to specify a username and a password for a user that had, has access rights to write to the task scheduler. All right, now we have changed the starting time or the starting trigger. All right, up next I will show you how to start a task and we can use the start scheduled task commandlet to do that. We need to specify the folder path and the task name. I'm gonna run three commandlets at the same time. I will then get this scheduled task commandlet to see what the running state looks like and then I'm just going to convert our output that we can actually see our error codes that I've showed you in the first part of the session. Oops, that was actually wrong, I'm sorry. So the ready state is, is code zero. But if I start the process, you can see that the error code or the code 41301 means that the task is running. If we stop a scheduled task and we, we can use the stop scheduled task commandlet, we just need to specify the task path and the task name. And for demonstrating purposes, I will show you what it looks like if we start a process and then stop it again and what the error code of that looks like. So the error code 4106 means that the code or the 
task was aborted. Okay, up next I will demonstrate to you how to export a scheduled task. First of all, we are going to create a string variable for the XML file that we will write to. Then we're going to create an object variable of our task. We're going to use the export scheduled task commandlet, specify the path of the folder and the task name. And then we can either pipe this to out file commandlet specifying the folder path or the file path. We can also achieve the same by using the greater than character or we can use the set content and then specifying our object task or our task, this needs to be task, and then the file path from what we would like to write to. To read information from a file, we're going to use the get content commandlet, specify our file location, and you can see our XML that we have written to disk. I'm also going to open Internet Explorer to show you what the file looks like. Okay, up next I will demonstrate to you how to import a task. We are first of all going to create an XML variable of our file. We're just going to re-import the same file. We're just going to specify a different name. So I'm just going to replace the .xml with underscore import as the name. And then we're going to register our task using the register scheduled task commandlet, specifying the XML parameter, then specifying the XML with the outer XML. The task name will be our imported task, and then specifying the path, the username, and the password. For more information on XML, please view my session How to PowerShell XML. All right, now as you can see, we have created a task called PowerShell. Down here, we have got PowerShell underscore import as the name. And this is how you import a task. All right, if we need to get rid of our task, we can unregister the task from Windows Task Scheduler. We can use the unregister scheduled task commandlet. We need to specify the path where the task is and the task name. The confirm switch will just suppress any confirmation pop-ups. All right, this is we have removed the first one. To remove the second one that we've imported, we can run the same command. All right, this does not delete the folder, so I'm actually going to open our task scheduler again. And as you can see down here, we have successfully removed the task, but the folder is still there. So what we're going to do is we are going to remove that. To do that, we need to create an object variable of a type new or com object with a type scheduled service. Now that we have that, we are just going to connect to that service. And then we're going to use the get folder method to get our root folder. Now that we have our root folder, we can delete the folder called PowerShell and just specifying null. And we're going to use the method called dot delete folder to do that. All right. After we've done that, I'm just going to open our scheduler again and you can see that the folder has been removed. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the session and I'm looking forward to our next one.